you should just put this right back on the shelf if you're considering getting it. All right, so today it's Foundation Friday. If you're new here, I have a whole Foundation Friday playlist with hundreds of foundation reviews. And today I'm gonna to be doing kind of a summary compilation five in one foundation video. So these are my thoughts on five different foundations I've been testing. All of these are new releases. Four of them are from the drugstore and one is high end. I'm testing all these for a while now in different ways with different primers, with brush, sponge, everything and I have my thoughts on them, so I'm ready to do this video. I'm also gonna be including shots and in natural lighting of each foundation so you can see what it really looks like on the skin. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's Foundation Friday. If you do while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. Let's get into five different reviews. I wore this shirt one time to a physical therapy and the PT just was saying ooh la la the entire hour, so now that's all I think about. So if you're new here, my skin type is normal to dry, but in the past couple of months, it's actually been super dry. Like I have some dry patches going on and some foundations can cling to that. I also have textured skin, so I'm not someone who can just, you know, put on a foundation and it looks great. You might have skin that is totally different and foundations will probably look totally different on you. I can speak from that firsthand. My skin before Accutane was oily and foundations would look totally different on it that now I can wear or vice versa. So let's start off with the foundation that I'm wearing right now, which is the new CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear 3-in-1 Full Coverage Foundation. So I initially picked up the shade 805, which ended up being too light. I now have the shade 810. I think I'm kind of like in between those two. I think 810 is a little bit dark. I can definitely like see it, you know, on my neck when I wear it, but I would rather have my foundation be a little bit dark than a little bit light and just look ghostly. This foundation retails for 1050, has one fluid ounce of product, which is standard, and it comes in 21 shades. This foundation has SPF 18, and it's basically described as a full coverage, transfer proof, sweat proof, 24 hour wear, humidity proof, covers imperfections. It's basically supposed to be a full coverage, very long lasting and like resistant kind of foundation. I do think this foundation is full coverage. I'm gonna insert a photo here of a morning when I was coming out of a migraine and I had a hot pack on my face that whole morning so it was super red. And you can see the before and after photos basically fully covered it up. I do think it's full coverage. I can use a brush or a sponge with this one and still get good coverage, but I definitely get more coverage if applied with a brush. That tends to be how it goes for me just in general with foundations. I was expecting this one to be more matte than it actually looks on my skin. Every time I've applied this, it looks satin like it has a true satin finish on my skin and one of the claims on this one is that it feels comfortable lightweight and breathable on the skin I don't know if I necessarily feel like it's super breathable but it definitely has a pretty lightweight consistency like it's not thick it doesn't feel like the other covergirl foundations it does have more of a a little bit runny consistency which I really like especially that it's has that consistency but it's still full coverage so here's the thing Every time I apply this, I really like the way it initially looks. I don't think it's mind blowing how it looks on my skin initially. Like for me, it looks a little bit makeup-y just in a few areas like right here and then kind of around my nose. But overall, when I put this on initially, I do really like the look of it. The thing is, this thing wears terribly on me in just a couple hours. It starts separating, it starts emphasizing my texture. It is not transfer proof at all. It fully comes off on my mask, like especially on my nose and then in this area when I'm wearing a mask. And for a foundation that claims to be like very sweat proof, humidity proof, 24 hour wear, you just don't expect it to fly off your face in two hours. Okay, so here's the CoverGirl foundation after it's first applied. I don't have any setting spray on right now. I do like to use setting spray, but I wanted to show you the finish without setting spray. So here's what it looks like, full coverage. Here's my forehead. So it doesn't look like totally, you know, smooth and like no texture on my forehead. Like some foundations can be really smoothing on my skin. This one I wouldn't say is super smoothing, but I like the coverage, I like the shade, and I like overall like generally how it looks when it first goes on. Okay, so I have the CoverGirl foundation on right now. I've only had it on for three hours and this is probably like the I don't even know, 15th time or so that I've worn this, so I have my thoughts at this point. But I wanted to show you guys because it's only been on for a few hours. All I did was go to the doctors and I had a mask on, obviously. And this is what it looks like for only a few hours of wear. So as you can see, for supposedly being like a you know long lasting long wear foundation, it fully rubs off every time I put a mask on on my nose. And then my forehead just looks pretty crusty and also just like kind of separates and wears off and doesn't look the best 
between my eyebrows and this is only a few hours in it looks much worse like you know six or eight hours in and i'm aware my eyes are super red today and then it just looks pretty crusty and like almost patchy on certain parts of my face like over here and i don't even have blush on today i have on like a little bit of bronzer and that's it but it's just it doesn't wear well on my skin at all I've tried it with different primers. A primer that seems to be working really well for me with other foundations right now is the e.l.f. Mint Melt Cooling Face Primer. This is like a gripping primer, and even that one didn't help the wear of this foundation. I've tried it with different setting sprays over top. This foundation just doesn't wear well on my skin, which is unfortunate because, again, I like the coverage. I like how it first looks when it goes on, but it's just one of those that I'm super ready to clean off my face in a few hours. If you guys have tried this foundation, let me know how it wore on your skin and what skin type you have. I'm always curious. And that goes for any of these foundations. It's always really helpful for people if you comment that down below, because you guys can kind of like read through the comments and see what other people's experiences were. So for any of these foundations, definitely comment down below how they worked out for you, but put your skin type and put what kind of skin you have, because without that information, it's not as useful, you know? So let us all know down below. For the second foundation, let's talk about one that's kind of a polar opposite in claims and everything to the CoverGirl foundation. This is the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint SPF 30. First off, let's talk about this packaging because it's very unique. I've never seen a foundation in this kind of packaging. So what you do is you obviously take off the lid. You actually push this up from the bottom and then there's a little ball up here that you just like roll it on your face and it feels nice and cooling, but if you don't use all of the foundation that comes out once you pump it, it does get a little bit messy because then you just have like foundation chilling up there in the packaging. This foundation retails for $42, but here's the kicker, okay? You get half an ounce of product in here. <laughs> half an ounce of product for $42. The standard amount of foundation or any kind of like tinted moisturizer or whatever is typically around an ounce. That means for a full ounce of product, this would be $84. So that's definitely something to consider very high up on your list. But there's a couple cool things about this. It is recyclable packaging and it is coral reef safe and it has SPF 30. So if you're going to Hawaii or somewhere like that and you want just like a lightweight product with SPF that you could wear in the water safely for the uh, environment, then this product is reef safe. It has 14 shades, which is not great. A lot of products that are like skin tints tend to kind of get away with less shades or not really get away, but they, they market it by saying like it's lighter coverage or it's sheer, it's a tint. So it can be adaptable to different kind of skin tones. But the thing is this shade is the lightest one. It's the shade fair and it still looks like a little bit too dark on my skin tone. So because we'll get into the coverage and stuff in a second, but most products you can kind of still tell if they're a little bit too light or a little bit too dark. So 14 shades is not great. So as far as coverage, I would say this actually has like the perfect amount of coverage for being a light coverage product. If you want to sheer it out, you can put less on, but you can get like decent coverage for a light coverage product, if that makes sense. Some light coverage is just kind of like, why am I putting this on? This one, it's still evening out my skin tone and it looks beautiful. We're getting into the finish here. This is one of those light coverage products that just based on the look of it, I do love because it looks like skin. It's pretty undetectable on the skin. It gives a really pretty glowy finish, but you can't see the product like sitting on top of your face. And that's exactly what I look for if I'm using a lighter coverage product, because if I wouldn't be using light coverage, I don't want you to be able to see like the texture on my skin and see the product clinging to it. And this is not one of those products. This looks beautiful on top of the skin. Okay, so here's what the Milk Makeup product looks like in natural lighting. It is about half a shade too dark for me, but I feel like it's wearable, the undertone is right. Definitely very glowy. I like that personally, it doesn't bother me. I prefer a glow. I do have on a Charlotte Tilbury um, liquid highlighter, so that's adding some like extra glow, but I didn't put that on my forehead. So all of the glow you're seeing on my forehead is just the product. I personally like this amount of coverage for just day to day with adding on like a little bit of concealer. I did add concealer to my under eyes, the NARS concealer. Right here tends to be my problem area. And this one sits really nicely between my eyebrows. It looks really nice on my forehead, just 
looks nice and glowy, very natural. I think this would be a really pretty summer foundation. Another thing I really love about this is that even though it is pretty glowy, like it definitely has a dewy finish, it is one of those dewy products that actually sets down, not in a way where it's like a powder finish or totally not tacky. It does have a little bit of tackiness to it, but it's definitely not slippery. It's not sliding around. It does feel like it's on there almost a little bit in the way that like MAC face and body feels. And this does have more coverage than MAC face and body if you wanna kind of compare it to that. It doesn't have terrible transfer. It isn't fully transfer proof. Like you are gonna get a little bit coming off, but it's not to the point where you take off your mask and like you can see, you know, lines or like a lot of redness coming through like with the CoverGirl. This one for me blends out perfectly with a brush. If I use a sponge with it, it's kind of too sheer. So I like to apply it with a brush. But overall, I, I really enjoy this one, which sucks because it's so expensive. And I'm already like a quarter of the way out of this thing. This one I think was probably the one I wore the most. And I've been testing this one for since it came out, so like a couple months now. But it's definitely one that I found myself wanting to reach for most often. So I actually really enjoy this one. It's just up to you if you want to spend the price on this. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do when it's out of it because I do like it. If you want to try something similar-ish, a little bit lighter coverage, but that's one of my holy grails. Try MAC Face and Body. They literally just did a $10 off foundation sale, so you could get it for $23. And oh my God, <laughs> what just happened? I literally just almost fell out of my chair. Okay. Anyways, MAC Face and Body is great. They also just came out with new shades. I ordered it. I'll let you guys know what I think of the new shade I ordered. Here we go, moving on. Let's just compare it to kind of a similar concept kind of product, but from the drugstore. So here's number three. This is the new Revlon Colorstay Light Cover Foundation. 12 hours, natural finish, SPF 35. So this retails for $14, has one ounce of product and comes in 12 shades. So two shades less than the Milk Makeup one. But again, they did the same thing where they're like, we don't need shades because it's sheer, you know. Yeah, I have in my notes here that on their website, it literally says range of adaptable shades. So I use the shade 130 porcelain in this one. And I think they should have actually gone with like a clear top on this packaging because when you open it up, it has the squeeze tube, which again is just reminded me of like a Glossier skin tint or MAC face and body kind of vibe. It's supposed to be light coverage and just based on the claims for this one, it seems like they're going for kind of the undetectable skin-like light coverage kind of look, which is what both of those products are supposed to be. Mm. So to sum it up, this product is everything I don't like in a light coverage foundation put into one. It is light coverage, but it clings to every ounce of dryness, every kind of texture. It just emphasizes everything when again, if I'm going in with a light coverage product, especially, I just want it to look like my skin. I don't want it to look worse than my skin. And this is one of those products where I would just rather not wear foundation than put this on. It is very runny, kind of similar consistency to MAC face and body, hence the packaging squeeze bottle. To the touch, like if you touch your face after applying this, it does feel almost exactly like the Milk Makeup. So I like that about this, but I mean, I just would not recommend this product. It looks pretty crappy on my skin. If you have textured skin, you'll probably have a similar experience. If you don't, and maybe you just have nice smooth skin, or if you have kind of more oily skin, maybe it wears totally different. I did read some of the reviews on this one because I was curious, and it seems like overall it's a kind of no, but some people with oily skin do like this one, so probably just depends on your skin type, but definitely don't agree with the undetectable claim. It's super detectable, and you should just put this right back on the shelf if you're considering getting it. All right, another new drugstore new release. There's been a lot of new drugstore foundations lately. I feel like that tends to happen in spring and summer. It's kind of when they amp up on the drugstore releases, but this is the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation Hyaluronic Acid Longwear. So I talked about this in one of my first impressions video. I think it was the Elf Chipotle one. Actually, I used it in that video, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so if you wanna see it applied, you can check out that video. But this one I've been testing out for a while now. I think at this point, probably like over two and a half months. Not exactly sure, but it's been a while. This one retails for $11, has one fluid ounce of product, and it comes in 20 shades. So I actually have the shade 004, which is not the lightest, I realized when I was <laughs> researching for this video. It initially looks like a perfect shade for me when I put it on, but it does oxidize about half a shade. And I feel like once it oxidizes, it does look 
a bit dark. So I feel like I could go with the lightest shade, which is 002. There's no three, it just jumps from two to four, which this is four. So I think I am gonna pick up the shade two. So they claim this foundation has medium buildable coverage. I would say it's like low full coverage. I think it is more than medium coverage. And I don't think you need to build this up really because you get pretty great coverage off of the first layer. I never have felt like I need to build this up and add a second layer with this one. They also say this has a natural matte finish. I have never gotten a matte finish with this. If anything, it looks very uh, satin glowy. Just by the sound of this, it has hyaluronic acid. It's a hydrating foundation. This one definitely sounds more like it's geared towards my skin type. So if you have oily skin not sure if this is going to be the one for you but for me I do really like how this foundation goes on it feels very smooth it is one of those foundations that I just like putting on because it's super easy I don't have to spend forever blending it it looks like nice and plump on my skin I like the coverage it's just like an easy foundation where I'm like okay I want my skin to look good today I'm gonna put this on so here's the Catrice foundation with concealer on underneath my eyes and I do have a little bit of a uh, liquid highlight on underneath the foundation as well just right here but i love the way this goes on top of the elf mint kind of primer it just goes on so nicely i feel like it almost adds like a little bit of coverage it grips really well to that primer but still looks super soft on the skin here's even more up close and this one i do like to press in with a sponge on my forehead or else it looks like a little bit textured right there but if you just go in with the sponge after your brush and press it in. I mean, I think it looks pretty good on my forehead too. But I do notice that about, I wanna say like five hours in or so, it starts to crease a little bit on my upper lip, which a lot of foundations tend to do. But my Holy Grail ones, like Purito BB Cream, doesn't crease on me at all. I definitely have products that don't crease on me, so it is possible. So if you have fine lines, I can't say that this isn't gonna, you know, settle into them, so just be aware of that. But if you don't have issues with creasing, I think you might really love this one if you like kind of a satin, higher coverage foundation from the drugstore. All right, and then last up, we have the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. So it says, full coverage, natural finish, has collagen, peptides, niacinamide, SPF 30. This product retails for $14, has one fluid ounce of product. It comes in 20 shades. I use the shade Fair 120N. Out of all these, I was definitely most excited to try this foundation out because it's supposed to be full coverage. A lot of people are comparing this to the It Cosmetics CC Cream and saying it's like a dupe for it. So I was super stoked to try this out. I love the coverage, okay, love the coverage. A little bit goes a very long way. You don't need a lot of product with this. I feel like I get full coverage even when I'm using like half a pump with this. You can apply it with a brush, a sponge. I like using a dry sponge with this one too. It still goes on full coverage even with the sponge for me. So definite full coverage with this one. On me, the finish of this looks like a true satin finish, which I do really like. It's not too matte. It's not too glowy. It's like that nice in between. So here's the e.l.f. CC cream. I love the coverage of this one. I love the way it goes on. I do notice that if you have any kind of dry patches, like I had a little bit on my forehead today, definitely moisturize really well underneath and then a setting spray helps. Right now I have on the Wet n Wild uh, setting spray over top which does add a bit of a glow. Also just feels really comfortable on the face. Like my face doesn't feel overly tacky or anything. It's not like a fully powder finish, but it definitely doesn't feel super sticky like when you touch your face. And I feel like this shade is also pretty perfect for me. However, on my skin, I don't know if it's just the textured skin or the extra dryness I have going on right now or what, but it looks very makeup-y. The product itself is a little bit on the thicker side. So if you have creasing, if you have texture, it just looks makeup-y. And this one creases on me pretty quickly, like within a half hour or so of having it on. And then as the day goes on, it just settles into the lines more. And it just looks makeup-y. As soon as I figured that out, I was like, okay, let me start using barely any product. Like, let me just use a little bit and see if I like this worn with a little bit less coverage because I'm using less product and I still had the same experience and this one also doesn't look great between my eyebrows it like really emphasizes all of the texture and bumps and everything going on right there so even with less product I still was having the same issues where it just looked too noticeable on my skin so I am so bummed because I again love the coverage I want to really like this one 
just doesn't seem to work well on my skin. But man, I'm bummed. I really want to like this one. Those are the five foundation reviews. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Foundation Friday. Let me know what you think of this kind of five in one review. I think it's helpful to get kind of more comprehensive reviews. I also do Foundation Friday updates where if I do first impression videos, I'll update once I've tried more in those videos. So another one of those will be coming as well eventually once I have enough in that category to do another one on. Let me know what other foundations you want me to test out. I'll tell you the makeup real quick that I used on the rest of my face. For lips, I'm using the Koki 515 Warm Nude Liner. I just have this all over as lipstick. I love using the shade as lipstick. For bronzer, I'm actually using the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Powder, but in the shade 160 Medium. For blush, I whipped out Buxom again, Wanderlust. Forgot how freaking good this thing is. It's one of the most beautiful blushes of all time. Then highlighter, my go-to Essence Pure Nude. And for eyes, I brought out a oldie but a goodie. This is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance Palette. Just went in with a few shades from here. We're in the Glossier Pro Tip Eyeliner. And then I couldn't even tell you what mascaras I have on. I'm like testing different ones and I, I just went crazy layering things, so irrelevant. But everything I talked about will be linked down below, all of the five foundations, and then all of the makeup on my face, nail polish, shirt, bracelets, anything else you want to know is always listed down below in the description box. Also, I don't know if I've ever like verbally said this in a video, but I do have an FAQs page now. It's just taylorwin.co slash FAQ or FAQs, I'll link it down below, but it has all of my most frequently asked questions, what cameras I use, hair color, bracelets, all of my earrings and rings and everything are linked there, like literally all the ones I never take off. So if you ever wanna know like one of the basic questions, you can definitely check the FAQs link and it's there. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.